Hello and welcome back to the All Out Brits podcast, the podcast where us British mandem come and send the house on all things NFL from across the seas. And as always, it was an action-packed week in the NFL with plenty of games, plenty of picks and plenty of shocking, shocking flags being thrown on the play, but surprisingly not against the Eagles, which I'm sure... We'll uh, we'll have to talk about. I'm, I know Elliot. I'm I'm atting them straight away. Atting the NFL straight away. So before we get cancelled, there's only one thing that we can do, and that's introduce you as well. Welcome, as always, Mr. Elliot Greenwood. How are we doing this week? I'm doing good, mate. It's been again, once again. I think it's been a very mixed week. There's been some very very good games and some very very dog games. However, once again, we're here to talk about it, and also. We are now on Spotify. We didn't say that last we week. We now are on Spotify. Yes, indeed. Ah. We've, so, uh, we've, ended, we've moved on. We're not only just on YouTube, but if you're ever bored and you've got your AirPods in or anything like that, you can listen to our beautiful British accents on Spotify as well. I, I didn't see anyone at us in their Spotify rap this year, Taz, but I assume next year that'll be... I think we're a bit late to the trend, but next year I'm expecting high list in a minute. So we'll, we'll manifest that into existence. But yes, so make sure to add us on Spotify, All Out Brits Podcast, and hopefully you'll be joining us on there as well as on YouTube so you get the best of both worlds. But it's only right, Elliot, to start off in the way that teams normally finish, and that is in two-minute drill. As always, we're going to recap all the action from week 12 in the NFL as fast as we can with few timeouts. We had a few extra timeouts last week. No timeouts this week. No timeouts are in the bag. We've got two minutes on the clock. That's it, bro. Two minutes. I've, I've two prepared. minutes. Okay. Are the plays already called? Are we, are we ready for this? You know what's going on? Bro, everyone, I've got Tank Dell running over here. CD Lamb's going okay. to do it. We've got, we've got everything covered. Okay. All right, then. Let's get set. Ready when you are, bro. Here we go. <laughs> Fuck on the play. Fuck on the play. From the start, Stop. I was not expecting it. Go with, mate. We've run out of time. <laughs> I was not expecting it. <laughs> the dog, here we go. I was not expecting that first start. Sorry, that was false start by me. <laughs> right. We'll have to call it again. <laughs> go again. Oh, right, we're moving back a few yards, guys. We apologise for the delay of game here. People are really listening and waiting. We can't talk about the audio files and you're messing them up already, mate. <laughs> We'll get it done sorted now. Right, are you ready? I'm ready, bro. I am this time. Here we go. What it is? Hi. There we go. So Lions versus the Packers. Lions lose on Thanksgiving again. It's a tradition at this point. Um, but Love is playing elite. I've been criticised in the last couple of weeks, but three touchdowns and over 200 yards, 250 yards from this week, looking like a bit of a quarterback in Green Bay. Cowboys versus the Commanders. Deron Bland is in the history books, baby. The only person in NFL history. Let me just say, the only person in NFL history to have five pick six on the season. Not only that, but Dak Prescott had a game, four touchdowns respectively those players got NFC defensive and offensive players of the month. Superb month for a Cowboys fan. Moving on, Seahawks versus the Niners. CMC boy, CMC he balled out. He balled out. Bang, bang, Niners gang. Bang, 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 baby. 19 carries, 114 yards, two, set, uh, two touchdowns for him and also two sacks for Bosa. They're looking like a very, very solid team now, the Niners. Jets versus the Dolphins. Boyle was wank. Tua was wank. <laughs> two turnovers for them each. But Moster got it done on the ground. Two touchdowns for him, 94 yards. And A-Rod is so, so close. So close to coming back. 21 days of activating for his training period or whatever. So hopefully we can see him by the end of the season. Colts versus the Bucks. Jonathan Taylor was back. And then he injured his thumb. So we're going back to, um, to bloody Zach Moss. But if you've got him on your fantasy teams, that's another good shout. Uh, Mike Evans, two touchdowns as well. He's looking a little bit tasty, but... Colts got it done. Giants versus the Packs. How on earth can you call that an NFL game? That was one of the... I called it in the week before, one of the worst games I think we've ever seen. Uh, neither team deserved to win, and a win was probably the worst result for, for the teams. Losing a chance to get Drake May and Caleb Williams in the draft. Bengals versus the Steelers. Browning is not the guy. Najee Harris, though, he was very, very productive to, for the Steelers, who moved to 7-4 and in a very good spot for the Wildcards. Titans, Panthers. Frank Reich is gone. 
Panthers have an interim head coach for the rest of the season, but, but the Titans get the W. So we'll see what can happen with the Panthers. Now there's been a bit of a change round. Texans versus the Jags. Stroud was once again elite, but let down by two missed field goals. That's what really cost them the game this week. Um, six points he, would, would have would have done it. They'd, they'd have won the game. Um, but the Jags move into eight and three, looking like a nice little team ahead of the playoffs. Falcons versus the Saints. As a B. John Robinson fantasy owner, thank you, Arthur Smith. Thank you for finally getting him involved. Unfortunately, I benched him this week, but for next week, he's definitely starting after 27 points for him. Uh, and that's anyone's division now. Five and six leads that division. Who's going to claim it? We will see later on. Uh, Cardinals versus the Rams. Do you think you're hard, Rams? Because you can beat up <coughs> little old Kyler Murray. He's six foot. He's just running around. He just he looks like he's playing Madden. He just plays with vibes. Although they lost, I love the Cardinals because Kyler can just run around and he looks so cute when he has the ball in his hand. Bless him. Aaron Donald can ball off for my for my liking. Broncos versus the Browns. The Browns back up had the same stat line as Russell Wilson, interestingly. Both had 134 yards. Both had one touchdown. But the Broncos are still riding, baby. Five on the bounce for them. They look like a good team. Raiders versus the Chiefs. We mentioned the, the, the receiver call for the for the Chiefs last week. Rasheed Rice had an absolute day. 107 yards, one touchdown. But also, Josh Jacobs had a day. I was loving life when the Raiders uh, were, were winning uh, into the second quarter, but Mahomes does what Mahomes does and he gets that job done. Vikings versus the Bears. The astronaut turned into the astronaut. He was absolutely dog water. Four interceptions for Dobbs on the day. But G DJ Moore himself, he had, a, he had another great, great day for the Bears. Over 120 yards, I believe, um, for him receiving. Chargers versus the Ravens. Herbert looked poor. Lamar looked poor. The game was very poor, but the Ravens go to 9-3. and three. And fi finally, finishing off this week, Bills versus the Eagles. Two missed field goals cost it for uh, for the Bills. And a clutch, clutch Jake Elliott, 60 yarder, sent the game to overtime, which ultimately meant that the Eagles won and move move ahead on the season. They are probably, however, the most overrated 10 and 1 team of all time. I was waiting for Not of all time. They're so bad. They're not a good team. They should have lost last week. They should have lost this week. And they're going to lose next week. But we'll see. We'll talk about that all in due course. And that is two minutes, baby. That was beautiful. He's getting better and better. And I think that led us to the end zone this week. And the, the point where we'll pick up where exactly where you left off, with it being the Bills and the Eagles. And uh, we've mentioned many a time now, this Eagles team just don't seem to be the greatest American football team that anyone's ever seen, but they seem to be hyped up as if they are. But as, as we all know, the teams that get it done are the teams that end up winning the big chip at the end of it. And I think that it's it's becoming more and more apparent with, with this Bills and the Eagles team. I think we'll, we'll talk about the Eagles first, because as you mentioned there, you know, now 10-1, and one, only lost one game but they still manage to come out of these games where they play absolutely crap and they're, they're well and far behind. But do you think it's at a point where they'll run out of steam because every time you think, oh, this is a chance, they'll drop out. No, no, they come back into this game. They rely on loads of different players. It's not just one man getting it done. All the team come together and get the job done. To me, they seem like the Man City of the, of the NFL world when it comes to it. They just, you know, every single time, doesn't matter how bad it is, They've all got all the, the infinity stones that they need to get the job done. What do you make of the Eagles then, Mr. Elliot? Um, no, not for me. Thank you very much, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I've come up on that, so you That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's all you're getting. They remind me of a few seasons ago the um, when Big Ben was still in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They started their season like this. I think they were a very similar record, maybe maybe 10 and 1, something like that. Very, again, very, very similar to the Eagles. And then they're just. The luck ran out, and I think that's what's going to happen with the Eagles. At some point, the luck has to run out. You can't, like, the luck that they're getting against the Chiefs, a drop catch, um, which would have put the game on ice for the for the Chiefs and really got them back into the game. And this week, two missed field goals against a team where they've, they've had no luck at all this season, and, and Josh Allen's not been playing brilliantly. But I thought he, I thought he had a really, really good game, actually. Yeah. Um, but the luck will run out at some point. I'm praying that it does because I really want the Cowboys to get a home playoff game, um, which which is looking more and more unlikely by the day. Um, but the Eagles, they're just Jalen Jalen Hurts is just one of those guys who's he's probably the most clutch quarterback in the league at the moment. 
but he's yeah. not the best quarterback. He's, he, the, the, the team just get it done, but I don't like how they're getting it done. And I yeah. think that's going to really turn around and bite them in the ass when it comes to playoff season. Definitely. And on the flip side, as you mentioned there, you've got Jalen Hurts and then you've got Josh T, as I like to call him. But this week, he did. He had, he had a relatively clean game. He only threw the one. But he scored near 40 points in fantasy. You know, he put the Bills in, in what should have been a winning position. But then at the end, you know, we're so used to in the past few seasons seeing him pull the Bills back and, and just getting them over the line and miracle comebacks. But just this season, it isn't clicking. And, and for me, I, I look at, you know, the assets he's got around him. You know, he's got rookie tight ends that just still have the potential, but not all the ability just yet. You know, he's obviously got Mr. Stefan Diggs, you know, the clutch receiver, but you know, it's Gabe Davis and, and the others around him, the, the right people to really keep this Bills team, you know, where they should be and where they want to be because, you know, that they're playing in an AFC where you've got a Mahomes who you meet every single year. You know, you've got a borough that you end up meeting halfway there and it's just so difficult for them. You know, at what point do they look around and say, maybe we need another star or maybe, you know, we need to move forward and look at other positions as well as the news today that Von Miller is on the run. So uh, it's not looking all good for the Bulls at the minute. So wh where do you think they go next from this point on? I don't, I don't think they can move on from, from the quarterback. I think Josh Allen is a very, very, very good quarterback. He's just had a bit of a poor season. But if yeah. you look at what he's done historically in that division, it doesn't make sense to move on from, from the quarterback. The quarterbacks in the AFC are absolutely stacked. You mentioned Mahomes, um, Herbert as well. Um, I could I could go on, but my memory's fading me, so I'm, I'm going to stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, you you mentioned Von Miller as well. Obviously, this has to hit a woman around the head, which obviously doesn't bode well for the team. Um, <laughs> but it'll probably end up getting a two two week ban, knowing what the NFL do. Um, yeah. but, and then the starting quarterback role, knowing him, you never know. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it? Um, but again, the I don't I don't know I don't really know where the Bills go from here because. They're not a bad enough team to get anything really good in the draft. They're very. They're going to probably draft sort of mid mid tier, um, but they're not good enough to have a run in the playoffs. Um, yeah. They don't have many assets on 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 the offensive or the defensive side of the ball that are really going to change a game for you at the moment. Historically, in the last sort of three seasons, they have done, but they're just not getting it done at the moment. So I really think they need to go away and add a star on both offense and, and defense. Really, um, add a pass rusher. Because because that defensive front is just not doing it. It's not getting it done for them at the moment. And I also think they need to add um, either a, a high power, a high powered tight end or some some sort of run, running game to try and support Josh Allen when he has these weeks where he decides to throw down to the defense, which has been more often than not this season, unfortunately. Um, but again, this draft class is absolutely stacked. So there's going to be talent available, but what talent they'll choose, I'm not too sure about, Mister Sidhu. Definitely. And I think uh, with the news of Zach Ertz being waived today, maybe that's uh, a power tight end that a few teams will end up having their eyes on. I, I, I've got to think about um, Zach Ertz. I, obviously, he used to be a, a, an Eagles player. Yeah. And with Dallas Goddard going down and him being waived now, I can see him going going back to Philadelphia and, and helping them make a make a deep playoff run. I really can. But but we will we will see what, what the Eagles decide to do. The ultimate storyline. Zaka is a power tight end. Another power tight end. Mr. George Kittle is a man in a team. I think it's, it's worth talking about. A 49ers team who go and beat the Hawks, make, making them 4-0 in the division. Uh, yes, 4-3-0. 3-0, sorry. Making mistakes already. But, <laughs> no, losing, all I know is we're undefeated in the division. And we're, we're looking at you know 49ers team who've got the least points allowed to the team against them in, in the entirety of the league, which is surprising when we look at the fact that they haven't really been firing on all cylinders. The defence wasn't firing on all cylinders, but still they've kept the numbers down and they've got to go and play a Philly team who are notorious in putting scores on the board. But in, in terms of the game this week, we know the Seahawks aren't you know an easy team to play against. We know that teams at the Niners you know, have played against the season aren't easy teams to play against. But they seem to, again, get the points on the offense. But now the D standing up, you mentioned in two-minute drill, Bosa with the sack. I think Chase Young coming in was an immense addition for that front line for the Niners because the way that he just, he makes it so much easier for, you know, 
rushes off the edge, even for Warner to come in and, you know, Eric Armstead as well. It just makes it so easy. And, you know, I think all the pieces are there for the Niners now on offense and defense. But for yourself, without the bias of myself being involved in that, what, what do you make of this Niners team now after the bye and after the loss that they've had this week? I think you mentioned the, the, the three massive stars that they got on defense: Fred Warner, uh, Chase Young, and, and and obviously Bosa. Uh, Young and Bosa coming off the edge. I think that is so so tasty and formidable um, of a defensive front. And people are saying I, I've heard a lot of talk about well, why didn't Young get a sack? Well, it all all the all the blocking schemes change now. Instead of being double teamed all the time. Bosa's yeah. now got opportunities to go one on one, and they're having to take into account the absolute monster that they've got on the other side. So there's pressure coming from both edges, and then you've got Fred Warner who stands in the middle at linebacker and just coordinates that defense superbly. I think he's, he's the best linebacker in the NFL. And yeah. um, I think it would be daft for me to say that the Niners don't have a good shot at the playoffs. Uh, so, sorry, at the Super Bowl even. But at the same time, they play in the same conference as the Dallas Cowboys, so. They're not going to get there. Obviously not. What what's, do you think? Uh, what's the record against Cowboys? Then? Mate, it happens every season. This year, let's just, let's this just, year, let's just this talk about it. Baby girls, listen, let's talk about it for a second. <laughs> but, you know, it's always a classic when it comes to the playoffs. You know, Niners, Cowboys. We know at some point in the season, them two will meet and it'll mean something. Obviously, when it meant something earlier on in the season, the Cowboys got run red raw, sent home with tears. Stars in their eyes, so you know it could happen again. It really could happen again. And and Brock Purdy, I think we always talk about him. He's a, he's a man on the same level as CJ Stroud in terms of uh, talkability on this podcast. But it's just amazing, I think, that now he's, he's played seventeen games, which is what you know an NFL season length is, and he just seems that he's, he's getting better, and he's not even there yet. You know, just looking at how much more confident he is, I think. The big play everyone's been talking about is, is this long pass to Ayuk when it was a, you know a design sort of check down to Kittle, and he just puts it in between you know two of the the sort of secondaries and just hangs it straight to Ayuk, and that's that's a rookie, that's the last pick of the draft doing that magic, and I think people you know they, we know that the ability Shanahan has and, and the, the sort of system he designed, you can say that Purdy is a system quarterback, but. To play in that system, we've seen many greats come in. We've seen, you know, quarterbacks come in who have tried and just haven't been able to do it. So I think it's it's time we give Purdy his flowers. If no one else does it, then I'll do it for the the little Christian man that I love so much. So God bless Absolutely. the boy. The boy deserves to get paid though. Man's 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 showing a room. Give him some money. San Francisco's an expensive city. Give him his money. He deserves it. He, uh, he can't keep living off. Um, I say. A small figure. He's on about 900k a year, I think. Yeah. But I think I, I, I saw a stat somewhere that Lamar Jackson earns that in 15 minutes play uh, play time. So I think uh, play time. Uh, I think he definitely earns. <laughs> I mean, there you are. It's been a podcast of fumbles this week already. Yeah. We'll blame the weather. We'll blame the British cold weather for the slow starts and everything. It's been proper. It's been proper like Buffalo weather, I'd say. Proper Buffalo like, weather. It's been horrendous. It's, been Just, it's been minus one here, and it's probably minus 15 in Buffalo. So we apologize to the <laughs> Americans. But because I've talked about the 49ers, I think it's only right we give you a moment with the Cowboys. So to, to sum up our sort of summaries of, of week 12 matchups, why don't you go ahead and talk about the Cowboys absolutely dismantling, dismantling the team again this week? I think the Cowboys this season have started to become a team that look like they can actually compete for championships. Before, it's always been something's been missing. They've had a stacked defence, but then the offence hasn't been getting it done. But this season, those parts have sort of come together. We ha- I don't think I've seen Dak play this well since he's been in the league. He's the most... Aaron Rodgers come out and said he's, the most, he's his favourite quarterback to watch. I think he's the most exciting quarterback in the league at the moment. He's so clever. We mentioned at the start of the show how he bellows at the line of scrimmage. Here we go! Here we go. It's just... Oh, it's, it's so elite. I just think he looks yeah. like a man that was born to play quarterback with a star on his helmet. Um, and as well, I mentioned De'Ron Bland. Um, but also, the, on the defence, Stefan Gilmore, who's a thing he's gone really, really under the radar this season. Jaron Curse at safety. Unbelievable making plays. Um, and I, I do hope that we can pick up uh, Darius Leonard, who's been waived by the Colts. Um, I think that... 
as the Cowboys and the Eagles are obviously losing Leighton Van Der Etch a couple of weeks ago to a neck injury. So if we can pick him up, that really does show up the linebacker position. But then Mike Parsons, when he when he gets going with Demarcus Lawrence on the other edge, I think the team looks absolutely stacked. And I do see us playing the Niners at some point in the playoffs. And Josh Kittle made it personal, you know. He had that fuck Dallas t-shirt on and you know what? Fuck Niners. We're gonna we're gonna do it in the playoffs, and uh, I'll hold, I'll I'll have a beer when when that does happen, Mister City. Do that big talk from the little guys as always, and it's something that we can always expect. But how about we move on to a league where we know that there's there's some people on top and there's some people that aren't, and that is our fantasy league. We'll uh, we'll move forward. I'm gonna put my claim out there. I'm 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 tanking now. I'm I'm currently sat three three and eight, three and nine. It was, it was a week last week where every player who I sat on the bench scored over 20 points, and most players in my starting lineup got about one. Um, it's, it's Can a I point just jump in there, though, Mr. Sidhu? I was doing this with the, last, the, with, with the lads the other week, whilst we were sat watching Red Zone, and we just think you, you're genuinely just bad. Like, you, you just yeah. don't pick the right plays week in, week out. And then you and then you bank on Taysom Hill getting 50 points. But it's laughable. The it's tight end, laughable. the running back, he's going to do it all. He's done shy all for you, mate. What, what are you playing at? You don't. All I'm going to say is, is my hard work and research gets, gets sabotaged every single week when you know, I go to the waiver wire and I, I look at all the research I've done and it's just been picked up by other people who have no clue about the sport. I'm just relying on my word of mouth and looking at my... <laughs> Notes and everything like that, you know. Devon A. Smith, the man who I sat for a week to, to accommodate, you know, bye weeks, has now gone on to score 15 points every week. Is now sat on another person's team. It's just, I, I'm, I'm getting, it's getting too much, Elliot. I think, you, I think you got 80 points this week, didn't you? I did, but again, there was a 80 sat on the bench you know as well. For me, though, it, it was the not sitting Brock Purdy when you got CJ Stroud, who's who's been unbelievable the last three weeks. Yeah, but. I, but Look, we ride with him. He had a You're great a game. He, he, he disappointed me in fantasy, but he didn't disappoint me in real life. And that's, I can take that. I really can. But like I said, I'm tanking now. It's all right. You know, we're, we're, no, no, I'm tanking. We're going to have a word with the commissioner. I think, you know, bottom of the league, they should get number one pick. I think this will be a motion path by everyone. And I think that this is the way it's got to work now. And the forfeit. Oh. You know, when it comes to that that bottom two playoff game consolation bracket, I'm going to eat him up. I'm going to gobble him. I don't know who it is. It's going to be game over for him. But the tank until then. I, no, I, I, the thing is though, if you carry on managing the team the way you, that you are, Big Cup Brock Thirteen is going to sack you, and they're going to get a new fantasy no, manager. No, 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 because I'm I'm the man for this. Right, <laughs> um, I am the Bill Belichick of this dynasty. I am the man who they won't fire because of everything he's done in the past, all 13 games that we've played. So just just bear with me. What about yourself? How did your week go? I mean, I, I can't say much better. I also lost this week. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're giving me grief then. However, I did get 155 points. I yeah, still managed to lose. Um, I was frustrated, very, very frustrated, obviously. I mentioned Bijan Robinson earlier in the show. Um, two touchdowns on the, uh, on the day for him and he just looked like a play that Arthur Smith should have got involved from week one. He looks like a proper, proper dual threat running back. Uh, but instead, I decided to start Joe Mixon, who got eight points, and I ended up losing my nine points. So to say I was frustrated is a little bit of an understatement. Um, but I'm still in a good spot for the playoffs. I'm, I, I think I need one more win to, to guarantee my spot uh, in this year's playoffs. But it's all about seeding. I don't want to face the guy who's got Christian McCaffrey on his team, I'll be honest. Because that shit scares me, bro. He's yeah. I have nightmares about CMC. When he does what he wants to do, when he has the ball in his hand and he's in the mood, yeah, he gets a few bruises, but he gives a few back. He's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous talent to have on your team. And he's definitely going number one overall next year. No questions yeah, asked. Is. Hence, hence the tanking. Hence the tanking. And you've really got a wives to offer up at this point. So it's just, it's a tough oh, moment. I, I, I've offered so many trades up this week, you know, I've, I've tried to get rid of Jamal Chase. I've tried to get that Prescott. I actually, I want, I want to know what you think about this trade. So, I offered uh, Justin Herbert and Sam Laporte for Dalton Schultz and that Prescott. I thought that was a very fair trade. And in response, the trade that I received was that Prescott for Tyreek Hill, uh, which I thought was an absolute mockery, absolute mockery of the game. Um, would you have accepted the trade? Is what I want to know. 
not to you. And I think that's the problem is, is, is the, the, you know, the GM behind these franchises, you know, there's, there's a blood there. And I think, you know, maybe you could do with a change in management if you, uh, if you wanted these players that you keep trading for. But yeah, I think it might be something to do with the GM that nobody likes him. But, you know, oh, move on. What Free and expert. Free this, and week? <laughs> what this week, my friend? Do you want me to start or do you, you like start off, Yeah, you start, I start Yeah, well... Guys, if you haven't realised by now, don't even bother listening to my picks. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> well, do you want me to just, shall I just jump in then? Or, or do you want to chat you off for five minutes? No, I'll, I'll chat for about a minute and a half. <laughs> you know. um, Rasheed Rice is a man who I've been looking at. I think he'll probably be swapped out for an Adam Thielen who was coming in clutch for the start of the season. And now the Panthers have lost all their claws and he is absolutely useless to me. <laughs> so when, when you're in a tank situation, you know, it's it's sports stuff. You just you leave nothing else on the waivers for anybody else. And hence why Rasheed Rice, you know, he, he's wide receiver one for the Chiefs, gets 24 points last week. He's up there with TK, Taylor Swift's boyfriend, and, and all the production, all the stats. So Rasheed Rice, if you want to listen to someone who's three and nine, is someone that you should definitely go and pick up. But what about you, Mr. Arrogant Elliot? What what you got for us? Sorry, sorry I've just got breaking news. Rashid Rice has been dropped for this week. Uh, he's ended up breaking both of his legs just because of your call there, Mr. Sidhu. He's going to get zero points. So don't listen to Mr. Sidhu. Listen to me. Um, we mentioned before around the Indianapolis Colts and obviously Jonathan Taylor being very, very questionable for this week. If Zach Moss is someone that you can pick up off your waiver wire, Go for it because I think he's gonna. He's, he's got good production um, in yeah. in that Colts in that Colts team, especially with with Minshew at QB. So if, I think if you, if you can get Zach Moss, get him onto your team. I think he's a very very um, a very very positive and a very very strong runner of the ball. Um, but Jonathan Taylor, when he comes back, he's gonna look. He's he's gonna win me the Super Bowl this year. I'll tell you now, he's gonna do it all for me. Um, Again, I think it was loads of points he got. I was very, I was very much contemplating dropping in this week. I ended up dropping Jamar Chase, which was an absolute <laughs> move. If you ask me. Um, but yeah, I think sell Chase and just get Zach Moss. That, that's my call. So listen to me. Definitely, we've heard it here first. The man with uh, Jonathan Taylor in his early draft picks has now said, "Forget him. Get Zach Moss in instead." So don't listen to either of us, as we've always. <laughs> We're useless Brits sat on the couch talking the NFL. So remember that in, in anything that we you do say and don't try any of this at home as well. It's Let's dangerous. Look forward. It's dangerous. <laughs> Let's look forward to this week's matchups. And as always, they're fiery. And there's a big one, a really big one that I think it's we've mentioned that there's been game of the seasons and they haven't let us, you know, really or left us, sorry, with with big sort of happiness, but this one seems like it could be a make or break for the NFC in particular. And it could be a make or break for my mental health this week going into work. And that is the 49ers and the Eagles facing off a 9.25 on a Sunday here in the UK. What an absolute treat. Thank you, America. Thank you, Sky. And thank <laughs> you, Scott Hansen. But we'll leave that man for a bit later on. But the 49ers, Eagles, I'm, I'm super hyped. I'm terrified. I'm scared. I'm everything. Hold me and love me. And I just need Brock Purdy to come cooking this week. Uh, I think it's going to be an, an absolutely mega game, similar to the Bills um, and the Eagles one, where it's just high score and a relentless back and forth. And it's going to need the defence on, on both sides to really be tested to the max when it comes to it. So my, my prediction for this week in terms of my punt Another point to mention is Mr. Elliot Greenwood is, is successful this week in our punts. He is currently three and one up against me. Uh, Taysom Hill yes, didn't didn't do what he was meant to do this week. The Saints didn't do what they were meant to do this week after their bye. But as Elliot mentioned, Bijan Robinson at the Atlanta Falcons did. So he's three one up against me in our punts this and I week. Think we did mention that there wasn't going to be a forfeit for that, didn't we? As well, so when yeah, you we'll, lose we'll this. Save that. Well. Yeah, we'll save that for the end of the season, mate. Like I said, let's not ruin the mental health even more than it already is. <clears throat> and so my uh, my punt for this week regarding the 49ers and the Eagles games will be that both quarterbacks have over one and a half passing touchdown. It's going to be high scoring. It's going to be high flying. Elbows will be detached, but hopefully it's not 
Brock Purdy's this time. Mr. Elliot, what are your thoughts on this one? I think, again, it's you mentioned Brock Purdy, you mentioned his elbow. It's a proper, proper grudge game. I think it's a game that would have been unbelievable last season um, in in that championship game um, and really, really set us up for a, a more exciting Super Bowl. Um, but for me, you mentioned the defences. I can see them having a bit of a day each. I think both teams have got to step up and I think those defences are going to stand tall, to be honest. Um, so I, my, my line is going to be... Um, each team to have over one and a half uh, turnovers on the day, um, and I can see I can see Brock Purdy throwing the ball either way. You know, I can I, I can see there being some defensive scores. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I'm surprisingly I'm hoping for a Niners win, get us to win the Eagles, and then we play them um, the time after the, the Niners play them. So not not this week coming, but the week after yeah. Cowboys versus the Eagles. There's some really really tasty matchups going matchups coming to us in yeah. the season. Um, so, bang, bang, nine is a cat. Welcome to the bang, bang, gang, boy. <laughs> it seems like we're supporting our team this week, and I'm guessing that you've got a line for the Cowboys game this week. Absolutely, sir. So, again, on the theme of defences this week, I think it's been a very... a very we, we, normally, we normally talk about the offensive talents, but I think we've, yeah. we, we're nicely focused on the defences yeah, this week. We are. I'm building on top of that. I mentioned the GOAT, the Ron Bland, the best cornerback in the NFL, Statistically, that's not me saying that. That is statistically, he's uh, the PFF um, grade one cornerback in the league, the best cornerback. Don't throw the ball his way because when you do, he takes it back and runs past you. So my pick for this week is the Ron, is the Ron Bland to have one pick six and move to six Ooh. on the season and break the records again, baby, because that's what we do. He's looking like an absolute steal as a six-round pick. Um, so, yeah, the Ron Bland taking it to the house. What's your call, Taron? I think for me, a man who I do have in my fantasy, a man who unfortunately sits behind Taysom Hill on the bench, but he might get a look in after this podcast, is Mr. Jake Ferguson, who Mr. Here We Go has been uh, here we throw to him every opportunity he gets. So I think this week I'm going to go for under, just to be safe. I'm going to go for under one and a half touchdowns, Mr. Jake Ferguson. I think he gets a bit of production. But I think Mr. That CD... Is such a cop out. That is such a cop out because you know what you said when we were up there. You know, you know what call you made. You absolute cop out. He's an absolute player though. Second year in the league. Uh, but unfortunately, Town City does not back him like that Prescott does. Uh, but we'll save that for another time. Yes, we'll save that for another time. But look, I'm, I'm either tanking at this point or I'm either trying to get points. So, you know, you've got to respect the hustle. You've got to respect the hustle. But we'll find out. Next week, whether I've been battered and bruised again or whether the boy's back up. But as always, to conclude and to prepare ourselves for everything that we've got going on in this week in the NFL, we'll head to the sideline, get a few refreshments and talk about arguably the best performance that we've possibly ever seen regarding the NFL. I think it's time to talk about one man who stood in the pocket this week as it collapsed as the pressure around him rose, as everyone around him panicked, as the roots went out the window and the plays went out the window and the stadium was on his back and everything was crumbling, Mr. Scott Hansen continued to deliver as he always does. And wow, what a performance it was. Mr. Scott Hansen, everybody, we mentioned we were thankful for him at Thanksgiving and we're even more thankful this week. Elliot, what do you have to say or what do you have to do for Mr. Scott Hansen this week? Well, imagine this flame, this Scott Hansen. It's standing tall, it's nice and strong, and it's just hot. It's just so, so good, and it will never, ever go out, not as long as Red Zone is a thing. I, I, I was amazed by the performance that he put in this week, the way that when everything, like you mentioned, when everything was falling down around him, when the fire brigades were going to come in, the sirens were, were bellowing out loud, and he goes, no, I'm going to stand it, and I'm going to deliver, because people have paid for it, and that's what I do. And he only goes when, out of the studio when he needs a wee, and he bloody did it this week. Uh, absolute goat. I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. He's just, he's just the greatest, one of the greatest human beings that um, God has gifted to us. I'll be honest. He's just an absolute talent. Um, the way that he just, he's just so calm under the pressure. I thought, if, if that were me, I'll be honest, but I'd, I'd have been gone. I'd have absolutely fled. I'd have gone. Screw the people, screw the game. Life's more important. That's it, mate. But he, he for him, the NFL is his life. You can tell he changed. How, how on earth do you change? 
I, I wouldn't change my diet for work. And he and he goes on like a, a low water diet or something like that for weeks a year. He might he might imagine you walking up to work and you're not allowed a glass of water because you're not you're not gonna have a wee for six hours. And do you know what I mean? He, what an absolute talent and what an absolute yeah. um treasure he is he, he is to the sport and, and as fans in the UK, he's really helped us uh, to embrace to to embrace the game and, and, and really start to, to love the game that the Americans have had for years. 100% and he is he's a treasure to us and speaking of treasure speaking of value our sideline question for this week is if god forbid we were ever in the circumstance where the world was crumbling everything was burning and we were left with a choice to save one thing person or, or item from the NFL what would it be Elliot what would you say is, is most important to you if that situation ever arrived uh, for me it's without a shadow of doubt it's, it's so easy um, it's, it's Jackson Mahomes. I'm obviously kidding. Uh, I'm throwing him straight onto the fire. I, imagine that. Like, actually, imagine. I could, I could feel the vomit coming out, of, coming out of your mouth at the time. That's no, awful. Not you Jackson. Can't, you can't he's, going on, he's, he's going on to the flames. Um, <laughs> for me, it's. I've mentioned him a lot this show, but I'll mention him once more. I'm saving the hands of Deron Bland. Like those hands have, have been money this year. They're won me games in fantasy. Um, so those, those hands ain't going anywhere near the fire. Uh, we're getting them with they're hot enough. Like the man's on a hot streak this this year, Deron Bland. So uh, yeah, he's probably too. He's probably hotter than the fire anyway. So we'll he'll be putting it out. Yeah, I agree with you there. I uh, I think definitely if, if that came the case and I had the choice between a renegading Jackson Mahomes and and a Deron Bland ready to run back for us, <laughs> I think I'd probably stick with that one there for myself. I think the people, you know, they might get the vibe already that, you know, it's, it's going to be Jimmy G, Mr. Goropolito, the, the beautiful man, the man who was gifted by God with everything. But you know what? I think I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna leave him there. I'm going to say he's already safe because he's, he's he's a God. He's, he would have made it out. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't, he, he wouldn't have, get himself into that situation. He would, would, never, he would, he would absolutely never. So instead, what I am, I'm going to save is a, is a flag. Is the little yellow flag that may be burning that the referees have in their pocket? Because hopefully then they might learn how to bloody use them, especially when it comes to this game on oh, Sunday. Tell them, tell them, tell them. <laughs> because if I have to watch Nick Bosa get held by the throat or watch Brock Purdy get horse collared and nothing gets thrown on the play, then I, I, I don't know. I might have to Google you know, the next fastest flight out to America and bring a pack of matchsticks because this is, this is terrible and I can't watch it for much longer. But we'll find out this weekend. So in that case, I'm going to bring the flags, save them just in case, and maybe slip them into the referee's pockets to pull them out when they need them, if they ever do need them. But one thing that we can both agree on is that Jackson Mahomes is he's first on. Uh, no first comment, on. mate. No comment. I'm not getting cancelled like he should be, but... <laughs> you can invoke a on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll uh, slyly back you that one. I'm sure the viewers, if they agree with that comment, they'll let us know themselves. And as we always know on the All Out Brits podcast, with everything we talk about, with everything we do, we know that the viewers are always coming back for more. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Elliot? Week in, week out. Do you know what? Our, I think we're up to about 30 viewers now. And do you know what? For, for, for a couple of Brits who, uh, who know nothing about anything, um, we talked about like, last week about Thanksgiving and what, what, what we are thankful for. Um, but thank you for you for, for listening. Thank you for making this far. It really does mean mean a lot to us. But I'll stop being a soppy twat now, and uh, we'll uh, we look forward to Taron losing this week in fantasy. Indeed, and as you already know, as we've already mentioned, we thank you very much for joining us this week. We thank you very much for sharing in all the enjoyment and sharing in all the abuse that has been received and given out. And as always, we know on this All Out Brit podcast, by sending everything, we know we'll keep you coming back for more. So thank you, everybody. Enjoy this week's game, and we'll see you next week when the Niners come with a bang and the Cowboys are feasting on birds. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time on the All Out Brit podcast. See ya!